Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to lesson three. I'm assuming you have either looked at the previous two lessons, or if you were looking at this environment, you would know how you either open this up or how to navigate it up until now. You need to know how to orbit, zoom, and pan before we move on. Um, so you should check out the other ones if you don't know how to do that. Um, now, a common mistake people make in this environment is they press the control button without thinking about it while they are zooming with their mouse. And if you did that, this would happen. You might be magnifying unintentionally the size of the windows that are in front of you. So you could actually crowd this whole place out like, oh, I don't know what's going on. It's getting huge. I can't see anything. So press control, roll the zoom dial back on your mouse until it's at a comfortable size for you. Okay, let's start building stuff. This is fun. So over here, make sure that on the right-hand toolbar, you have enabled the instructor window. It's the graduation cap looking icon over here and open up the instructor window. If you wanna close any of these windows on the right-hand toolbar, you just come up next to the name of that tool, like the instructor, and you just hit the X and it'll close it. You want to open it again, click on it. Okay. On the left-hand toolbar are your creative tools. And in order to create in here, you need to know that you're dealing with grid geometry. Grid geometry is the idea that you have um, two dimensions or two directions of measuring something that you're dealing with. One of them is the Right, the x-axis. The x-axis can be described as moving side to side or um, left to right or horizontal. And how does it get its name horizontal? Because it's like looking at the horizon line. So you could say that it's flat, but something that's vertical could be flat too. So that's not a really good descriptive. Um, this red line represents the x-axis and it is half solid and half dotted. And it's half solid and half dotted because it represents positive and positive and negative values past this point of origin where all of these axis lines meet. So these red lines are positive one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 20 going this way. And negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, ad infinitum. It goes on forever because this really isn't a real environment. So you can do anything you want in here. Um, the blue axis represents the Y axis, and you can describe that in different ways. Um, up and down, top to bottom, or vertical. The Y axis, positive, is things going up in the air from zero, right here in the where the point of origin is. Everything below that would be like hypothetically below ground, but there is no ground. As you can tell, you go under the ground and it's like looking through glass. The green line is the third dimension, the third direction of measuring something. You have the X axis, the Y axis, and then this Z axis is flat on the ground, but that's only because it's trying to represent the sense that you have some depth that you're moving toward or away from something. What would otherwise be a flat environment?